right, let's go back to our story on the online auction in Rhino Horn. Steve Gelster joins us live from Green Lake, Wisconsin. He's the founder and chief executive of the Freeland Foundation and also an anti-poaching advocate. Steve, what are your feelings on the legalization of trade in Rhino Horn and could it help in some way preserve the species? Uh, my feelings are very clear on this based on our investigations of the illegal rhino horn trade for years. Um, it's a bad idea. It's going to put fuel on the fire. I think it's very important to point out that South Africa and John Hume are not the only people that have rhinos. There's rhinos in India. There's rhinos in Kenya. There's rhinos in other countries also. And they're actually experiencing very little poaching right now. Most of the poaching going on is in South Africa, and I don't think that's a coincidence. I think there's a lot of openness to legal trade, and it's opened up loopholes for, for criminal syndicates. Well, look, it's certainly a difficult debate um, with uh, strong opinions on either side, but it appears clear, looking at the annual poaching figures, certainly in South Africa, that if current trends continue, the species could be wiped out. <clears throat> that's right. But what John Hume is doing with the backing of some government officials is just going to make the matter worse. And it's also going to impact rhino populations in other countries. His idea and that of pro-trade advocates is based on two faulty assumptions, mainly that um, poaching is being driven by medicinal sales. And that is not true. What we found investigating the illegal rhino horn trade is that the buyers, the ones who are buying most of the rhino horn, and who will probably be buying it from this auction, are actually buying them as futures commodities. They see that poaching's on the rise, numbers of rhinos are going down, they look at it like gold, it's like a finite uh, commodity. So they wanna grab it now and watch their profits go up. Secondly, they think this is some new idea. This has already been tried before with tigers and bears in the actual market country where South Africa is trying to um, make money on this, which is China. China years ago saw tiger and bear populations go down. So they started to farm them and sell their body parts domestically. That was supposed to reduce poaching and fund conservation. What it did was the opposite. It actually opened up a parallel illegal supply chain. Traffickers went straight to the source, got cheaper wild products, and I think the same thing is already happening and will happen even worse in South Africa as a result of this auction. Steve, what in your opinion should the South African government and various other stakeholders be doing to essentially save the rhino? South African government has an excellent plan to conserve all their wildlife and this, got, this issue got caught up in domestic courts. I don't actually think that a lot of the law enforcement officers in South Africa support this idea of John Hume. And I happen to know that some of them were very upset that the court supported this auction. It's just gonna make it very difficult for them to monitor what's legal and what's illegal. So what they should do is carry on with their plan. And if anybody needs to sell or do anything with their rhino horn, there are precedents for international donor organizations to buy up stocks and to lock them up and to, and to plow the proceeds into conservation. You do not need to commercialize and put this stuff on the market. That's just gonna kill more rhinos. Well, that was Steve Gulls, the founder and chief executive of Freeland Foundation, speaking to us from Wisconsin.